Much has been said about the Palestinian president's decision to attend Shimon Peres' funeral from both sides. But the real question is, will his presence lead to a positive change? With the upcoming Palestinian elections, this question is on everybody's minds. Joining us today in the studio is the president of the Meretz Party, National Assembly, Uri Zaki, with more. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So to begin, Abbas attending this funeral, you know, we've all been thinking about uh, this event since it took place on Friday. Why do you think he did this? Why did he request to come to such a sacred event to the Israeli people? I think it's a combination. Look, Abbas was uh, Shimon Peres' uh, you know, uh, co-negotiator uh, and co-signer of the Oslo Accord. Um, and they had uh, joint history together. Uh, they walked this path of, of you know, uh, going from a state of hostility to what uh, was then uh, an opening of hope uh, with the Oslo Accords. I mean, Rabin and Arafat, uh, Abu Mazen, Abbas, and Peres were the four who signed the agreement. Um, so it was, I, I guess, a combination of first a personal uh, tribute to a uh, partner who uh, passed away, but also uh, a commitment that I must say that Abbas, um, who is very many times described as, as someone who would not go for, uh, for negotiation and for peace, sh again showing courage vis-a-vis uh, -vis his own uh, people with lots of uh, criticism. Uh, we heard that even here in Israel, members of Knesset uh, from uh, the Arab uh, joint list did not attend the, the funeral in protest uh, of Shimon Peres' past while the leader of the Palestinian people did show up. Um, and I think it's very important for Abbas. I met him many times. And each time I meet him, he emphasizes the need for uh, negotiations, for talks instead of violence. And I think his coming uh, to pay this tribute to, uh, to the late uh, Shimon Peres was also a sign of, you know, which path he wants uh, to take his people to. So he did shake uh, Netanyahu's hand for the first time in a long time. How serious is this? Can, can we really call him a true partner? And is his coming to uh, you know, the funeral going to actually change the state of negotiations? I, I don't want to break uh, you know, uh, the, the expectations that, that, that you, uh, that you uh, raise here. I, I don't think so. I don't think that the funeral itself um, apart from showing us what could have been in a different scenario, uh, will change the situation. I think uh, even in, in Netanyahu's own speech, well, where he even failed to mention Abbas's presence there, which was, you know, dramatic. Uh, there was, there was uh, talks whether it will come or not come, and the Israeli leader can do this, you know, small tribute. He mentioned the Grand Duke of, of uh, Luxembourg, but did not mention Mahmoud Abbas. So I don't think that with the current Israeli government, which at the end of the day has much more power vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians than the Palestinians have vis-a-vis -vis Israel. At the end of the day, to go, to come to this funeral, Abbas, like any ride he takes, he needs an Israeli uh, permit. Uh, people think that he lives like in, in, in this sovereign country. It's not the case. He lives in the occupied Ramallah under uh, Israeli military uh, control. Of course, he has a lot of burden as well. I mean, uh, we're nearing the end of the Obama presidency. Obama, for sure, is someone who is committed to a two-state solution. And both these leaders have not done whatever they could to save uh, both peoples. And in that sense, Abbas shares the burden of responsibility. Uh, I really don't think that apart from, from the symbolic uh, step he took there, this would be the ignition of a new peace, uh, new peace uh, initiative or negotiations. But it's certainly uh, another ray of hope that something can be done and can still be done. Well, we can all use some hope here. Now, the elections in the Palestinian Authority, they were just postponed for at least another six months. What's happening here? You know, we are seeing polls saying that Hamas may gain control. Is that why these elections are being postponed, or are there more specific reasons? Look, um, there's definitely problems with uh, internal democracy in the Palestinian Authority. Um, in the last time, and, and we're talking about municipal elections, not national right, elections. Right. I mean, Abbas himself elections. is not 
uh, you know, standing to be reelected or anything like that. And neither is the uh, uh, Legislative Council of the Palestinians there. Uh, semi-parliament, -parl right. uh, only municipal, uh, municipal councils. Hamas uh, thrives on, on a deadlock in talks. I mean, uh, you know, when, when Hamas did win the uh, national elections in the Palestinian uh, Authority, his slogan was, 10 years of negotiations brought us nothing, uh, four years of intifada brought us uh, Gaza, vote Hamas, and, and, and won a landslide victory there. So uh, of course uh, they fear it's uh, they fear this. Al although you know Hamas, according to the Oslo Accord, if we still relate to the Oslo Accord as as the uh, uh, ground rules for what can and cannot be done in the uh, Oslo in the uh, PA, according to the to the Oslo Accord, Hamas can take uh, take a part in in an internal election. Um, the Bush administration back uh, in uh, two thousand and six did allow this. Uh, and, and we know the consequence. Um, I don't know. Again, I, I, this postponement uh, cannot be done in a true democracy. I mean, uh, and, 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 and the PA is neither a country, and to the extent that it is an entity, it's not a very democratic one, that's for sure. So let's talk about the Israeli government. There are some issues here that we're seeing all over the news right now. Is there really a chance that we could be seeing a unity government anytime soon, or are these just rumors? Well, uh, look, uh, I, it's hard for me to judge. I, I can't, uh, I mean, every two weeks there are those rumors. It's strange, I must, I must admit. I mean, um, on the one hand, you see uh, all the leaders of the Labour Party, uh, led by uh, Itzhak Herzog himself, the leader of the Labour Party, the leader of the Zionist uh, camp, uh, saying there's nothing about it. Uh, it. It never occurred. Even Netanyahu is now uh, saying it, 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 uh, there are no talks. On the other hand, I can't believe that the, you know, that the press is so wrong. I mean, someone is, th there is something happening there. Um, but if we we'll examine the actual uh, possibility of, of, a, of a unity government. First of all, it would not be a unity government because you have, it's, it's a right-wing government that would be joined by the uh, uh, main party in the Israeli center-left um, with no change in the structure of the government, with no um, political agenda and specifically, uh, you know, uh, negotiations with specific um, prospects of how they end vis-a-vis -vis the Palestinians, which I, you know, uh, Netanyahu has not been prime minister for two years now. He's been prime minister for seven years in a row. He had a uh, short term of three years between 96 and, and 99. We know who Netanyahu is. Uh, is not, I mean, he has all the chances in the world to, uh, to advance the, the talks with the Palestinians. He never used his, uh, he, he did whatever he could to, um, not to, to, he's not, he doesn't come with, with uh, if, if I'll try to, to say it as, as, as non-political as I can, with lots of enthusiasm, uh, speaking with the Palestinians. And on the other hand, he does uh, advance building of, of settlements and, and so on and so forth. So I don't see any reason for a unity government. Uh, besides, you know, when Begin went to uh, the peace with the Egypt and he had some opposition from his, within his own party of the, of the Likud, uh, the Labour Party, uh, together with the, the rest of the Israeli left, supported him from the opposition. That can be done uh, now. The problem in, is with, with the Labour government, and I must say, this is something that, that uh, Peres was the first one as the leader of the Labour uh, Party. Uh, they, they have this tendency to always want to be part of the, um, of the government, whether it's a right-wing government or uh, their own government. Uh, the, the most important thing for many of them is that they need to be in the government, even if, if those are governments that are really going against their basic core uh, values. Um, so it's not, it can't happen. It happened in the past. Uh, it's almost the automatic uh, behavior of the Labour Party. I'm, I'm quite surprised for the better that they haven't joined so far. Uh, but if they're responsible and if they uh, want to maintain, uh, you know, an opposition to a, to a government that is very right wing, that is very clear about its uh, stance. I think they should uh, remain in opposition and start behaving like an opposition because you can't sit uh, with one, one leg 
uh, on the government side and the other on the opposition side, this vacuum is being filled. Well, we're just going to have to see what happens on both sides. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.